Hey, what is up, everybody? Welcome back to Shy Gal Gaming. This is AC Seraph here with my partner Ashi. Hi, guys. And we are here for another nice little uh, lunch break on Wednesday afternoon outside of uh, Tokyo here. And what we are going to be playing today is good old uh, Splatterhouse, one of my all time favorite arcade games. Uh, this version is the. Uh, the TG-16 version, so the PC Engine version, uh, Japanese PC Engine version in this case. Um, it is somewhat different from the arcade version. There's a lot of censorship. Well, I'm not sure if it's censorship or just graphical limitations of the PC Engine. Um, there are some differences in enemy placement. Um, I've got a lot of experience with both of these games. As I said, Splatterhouse, particularly the arcade version, is one of my favorite games of all time. I play it almost every time I go to the arcade in Tokyo. Um, but um, I don't have an arcade version set up to stream right now. Um, so we're going to be playing this one. And yeah, another difference between the two is I would say that this version is a little bit easier. They give you like two health recharge between rounds and stuff like that. Um, so it's definitely the easier clear. Uh, we will be playing for about 25 minutes here. I'm not sure if that's quite enough to clear the game, but we're going to try to clear on a single credit. Uh, we are not going to continue, so if we game over, we game over, and that's the end of the stream. Um, but anyhow, I am going to get to it, so sit back, relax, and enjoy the violence, my friends. Have yourself a good lunch. <clears throat> Spooky, spooky. In case anybody is wondering, the emulator we're using to play today is Messen, uh, which is used for NES, Super NES, Game Boy. Kind of a multi emulator. Quite good, um, gotta say. So far. Um, I've only been using Metin for like a few days now. Because uh, I was using RetroArc a lot before. But I've kind of, um, I don't know. I've got mixed feelings on RetroArc these days, so I've been trying to kind of avoid using it and using more like standalone emulators. The results have been pretty great so far, I have to say. Yeah. yeah, these guys, weirdly enough, like, this is, like, one of the only enemies that I think is a bit harder in the TC hmm. version, or the, the PC Engine version. just now but it doesn't even matter because they give you two health between stages in this version in the arcade version if you took a hit there then you'd be going into this stage with less health um, oh, it's, it's it's a little bit easier but not because the stages themselves are much easier in fact they're harder at times but it it recharges your health between stages like twice as much the arcade version does as well. It gives you one health between stages, which is already quite generous for an arcade game. Uh, but this game, yeah, it gives you two health between stages, which makes a huge difference. The other difference that makes a big, like, impact on the difficulty is near the end of the game, there's a really hard kind of randomized stage with bubbles that you have to pop. That stage is much easier in this version. Reason being is I think it's more like a limitation of the PC engine to it being easier, but in the arcade version, if the bubbles fly off screen to where you can't attack them, they'll hatch. They're more like bubbles, I guess. They'll hatch and like they 
they'll spawn an enemy off screen. And that enemy will eventually come on screen and cause you lots of problems. So you have to be very proactive about it. What the? I think I lost, I lost a good point there, man. I definitely really pressed the button. Um, so... Anyhow, like, in this version, I guess the PC Engine, like, once the bubbles go off screen, it just treats them as, like, not there anymore. Mm -hmm. So the enemies won't spawn. So, you have sort of less things to worry about. It's a bit strange, it's not really like easier across the board, but it's easier in some ways. I don't know, this reminds me of Clock Tower. Oh, this game you mean? Oh. Because of the graphics? Graphic and like the furniture, like... <laughs> Oh, the moving, furniture, like, moving around. Like, I, I don't know. It's true, yeah. It just kind of does have a similar, like, vibe to the, the original Clock Tower. Like, Actually, just played the original Clock Tower for the first time, um, like, a couple days ago over the weekend. I didn't play much, though. Uh, I just made a big mistake. That was a, that was a big mistake. Wow, it's so much easier than this. That would have killed me. That mistake would have killed me in the arcade version. Uh, You're supposed to slide kick that picture mm. and that guarantees that you won't take damage but yeah it's a lot easier here it seems <clears throat> yeah you didn't yeah she didn't play it right you just kind of tried it out yeah it looks interesting though right i also i've never actually played the original clock tower in fact this whole time i had thought that clock tower 2 was like oh yeah the dots also they come from different directions The main thing that's more difficult about this version is that if you're used to playing the arcade version, the things that are different about this version will sort of like mess you up. Like that, for example, is not how it goes in the arcade version. Oh. Yeah, it's not that it's harder, it's just that when you know the pattern for one, the different points will be confusing for you. I've heard people make arguments that the game is almost exactly arcade perfect, and it's not true. It's, if you have a lot of experience with gold, you will know that the PC Indian version is by no means arcade perfect. It's a very good game. I think it's an amazing port for the time that it came out, because in that era, I mean, you couldn't really have arcade perfect home conversions. And by the standards of the PC Indian, I would say it's pretty damn close to arcade perfect. Hmm. But in like modern times, like the games are not really, they're not really interchangeable. They're they're different things. Being able to beat one doesn't mean you can beat the other. Baby is. I don't think the baby is in the arcade version. There. Oh, okay. It's it's in a different spot. I know. But like, I think the difference is like you've seen me make a lot more mistakes, right, than I would usually make in the arcade version. Yeah. But it doesn't matter because I get so much health back in between stages that it's just kind of alright. It does kind of look like, um, it does kind of look like Clock Tower 1 a bit. Right, the environment just... the just... atmosphere in general. Mm. Yeah. I, I like that atmosphere a lot, though. <sighs> Alright. So the strategy for these guys is exactly the same as the arcade version. This part is very simple. You punch twice, jump forward, slide backwards. Slide timing is a little different. <laughs> oh, he went up, he despawned, he went off screen. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit jank, I think, compared to the. I think there's like ways you can skip this part in the PC in the oh. The slide timing is ever so slightly different um, from arcade, but 
it's very close. Um, yeah, there's some, there's, there's really, this part is different too. Some of the differences are weird too, they're graphical. Like here, the weapon is this like, this like machete thing, not machete, cleaver. Um, in the arcade version, it's an axe. But I guess like function, that's right, this version is hard. Basic strategy is the same, but the angle of the hex can really fuck you in the The angle that the heads come at you in the arcade version hmm. is always such that the axe will be able to hit, but in the PC Engine version, sometimes they'll be up just enough that they'll hit you, and you can't duck under them, but they will not be hit by your, like, cleaver. So the correct answer is to, like, jump with a little hop kick to hit them out of it. Mm -hmm. But you wouldn't have to do that in, like, the arcade mm -hmm. But some of the hits I took there were caused by that. Oh, okay. It's been quite a long time since I played TC. The engine. I keep getting them, like, the TG-16 and PC engine. I keep getting the names, like, mixed up. Mm -hmm. The same system in the U.S. It's called the Turbo Graphic 16, and absolutely nobody owned one. I never knew anybody growing up who had one. I think I saw one in like our our game store in Portland once or twice. But never met a kid who had one. So I started playing Splatterhouse quite a lot later in life. I think the first time I played the original was when it came out on the Wii. They mm -hmm. released it on the Wii, this, this PC Engine version, mm -hmm. and I bought it. So that would have been like, still in like the late 2000s, I think. But I played Splatterhouse 3 on my Sega as a 3. 3, not 2. 2, I like way better than 3, but it's quite rare. So big difference in the TC version here with these enemies is that um, they'll they're actually smarter. They'll, they won't just walk into your punch usually, they'll like try to jump away. They don't do that in the arcade mode. They're dumber. So you just need to stand there and punch. Um not really. Like when there's two on screen, you need to wait for the right time to punch. But in the arcade version you can just stand there. One in the background. Oh. The graphics are not as sure about. Probably it has some kind of thing. That was a bad performance. Hmm. Might be okay on time actually. I'm pretty far at this point. I will probably die here, I think, because I only have one life and it's pretty hard to get through this spot without taking some risks. I only have one health. Well, you have four lives. Yeah, I think four lives. The real question on whether you can clear or not is just the bonus stage. Oh, we're okay. That's good. <clears throat> there. I think this is the same as the arcade version. I can't actually remember. Help me. <laughs> Help. Help. I'm kind of impressive that they got the voice in the, in the PC Engine version still. Oh, okay. Not the same as the arcade version. <laughs> it just stabbed me right in the face. Oh, right away. 
it, it won't attack you, it'll jump at you first. Oh. It, it won't just, like, stand and attack you right away, like that. Oh, okay. Uh, the spacing is different, too. It jumps farther. So I would say this is probably harder than the arcade mm. Not much, but it's like slightly. No, Jennifer, snap out of it! Please! Please! <laughs> we'll help you with your punch you. Yeah, and uh, I guess relative to like the screen space you have, the, the claw seems longer in this version. The first time I played this game, it took me forever to figure out how to beat this game. Like, once you know, like, once you watch somebody do it the right way, yeah. it seems really easy, but if you don't know the way and you're trying to beat it without a guy to figure it out on your own, this fight is really hard. <clears throat> That's kind of just how a uh, house is, I guess. It's all about knowing what to do. Yeah, that was way tougher. Is that it? Yep. Okay. Bear is down. Got about 10 minutes of lunch left. Can we clear? <laughs> the next stage is the... Uh... Next to last, but it's the uh, hardest. Oh, it's the bubble? This will also, like, determine whether I clear it all. Like I said, it's a bit easier than arcade, but that doesn't mean it's easy. It's still freaking hard. Slightly easier and it's stupidly harder than usual. Alright, we're already in a really bad state. Oh no! Mm. Nah, we're, we're not gonna make it through this, but we can sort of get the rhythm down at least. Try, not bad. Hello? <laughs> that took a while. <laughs> okay. He didn't vomit out things. Yeah, that's one of the graphical differences. Oh. Uh, there's a lot of graphical differences between this and the, the other version. I think it's mostly just a matter of like system power, saving memory, and stuff like that. The enemy deaths are a lot less violent. I sort of have to wonder whether it was like an intentional censorship for the console market, but I, I don't know. Alright, final boss! We're here! Can we clear on lunch break? Such a horrifying sprite! Looks awesome. Whoa, okay. <laughs> okay! That cool music too. I like the final boss music. Here. A lot of rocks. There's more rocks in here. Oh, that was yeah. There was nothing I could have done about that. Just is what it is. Probably it will not make it through. I think my health's a little too low, but it's not impossible.
bad here. Yeah. I was not in a good position when that hand came up, so there was no getting away from it. My only answer would have been to jump, but I would have jumped right into a rock anyhow. The um, final boss is not really, like, necessarily possible to clear without getting hit. There is a, like, some slight randomness to it that can lead to situations where you cannot avoid damage. Um, so it's just the way it is. Dangerous. A lot of times you will avoid damage entirely, but not always. Not necessarily. Because the rocks don't fall in a consistent pattern. wait for the rocks to fall before you engage the boss. Patience is a really important part of this game. So that hit I just took now was entirely my fault. That was just me sucking. Mm -hmm. That was definitely avoidable. This is the harder part. Oh, we got lucky. Almost none of the rocks fell near me. Alright, last one. See, that was on a I'm done! Cleared on my lunch break. Doesn't get much better than that. See you later. I kind of want to play through the the PlayStation 3 like sort of reimagining of Splatterhouse on stream, but I don't know when I'm gonna get around to it because I just have so many things to play that I want to play through. I'm like drowning in games. You still need to play the Tyrio Jigoku. Uh, yeah, that's like topping the list. I'm probably going to do that one after I finish Parasite Eve 1. Mm -hmm. I think I'll do it in between Parasite Eve 1 and 2. Yeah, and we're pretty far in Parasite Eve, so Tyrio Jigoku is coming very soon. As far as my retro games go. Mm, such a moody ending. And then, like, in the arcade version, right, you'll, mm. you'll actually have, like, the, the main character, mm. Rick. He'll be, like, standing here in front of the flames with the flaming house behind him. Looks really papaya, badass. Papaya, they, papaya, papaya. Papaya, papaya. <laughs> yeah, you know, in this era, they weren't allowed to use their real name okay. in the credits. Yeah, that's why. Papaya, papaya. T. Kobayashi. <laughs> I don't know about, like, Namco, but a lot of the companies would know. Original music by Chopin. <laughs> oh, again. This ending theme is so moody and cool, too. I like it a lot. Yeah. Man, I love this game. It's so good. Even the PC Engine game, I would have been really happy to have this version of it as a kid. I wouldn't really recommend the PC Engine version much over the arcade version nowadays if you're only going to play one of them. If you're really serious about the game or the series it's it's worth playing both to see the differences but yeah I, I would I find this to be the inferior version but it's still very very good for what it is I will get the arcade version available at some point eventually and then I will play through those I might try to relearn Splatterhouse 2 and 3 as well mm -hmm. 2 I should be able to learn quickly I'm not as sure about 3 Three is a different beast. End. Oh, we don't get the laughing terror mask either.
Oh. Maybe maybe you need to score really high or something? No, I don't think I think it's just not in the game. Mm. They probably didn't they probably couldn't put the voice clip in there. Alright, well, as you can see, the stream and the round of Splatterhouse is at an end, so not bad for for a little lunch stream. We made it all the way through the game on one credit. Um, pretty good. Uh, I will be back for more uh, soon, I'm sure. Some, we'll probably have some kind of stream going on tonight. Um, so anyhow, lunch break is over. I got to get back to work here in just like five minutes, so I'm going to go get ready for that. As for you guys, um, you know, hope you had a good lunch and uh, don't work too hard out there. See you in the next one. Goodbye.